a tax-free media zone in one of the world's fastest growing markets. With easy setup and licensing, access to a growing pool of talent and facilitated business support. Don't wait. Set up your business today at 2454 Abu Dhabi, where limitless opportunities await. Set your creativity in motion. Go. Ladies and gentlemen, we will shortly be arriving in the land of FC Barcelona. Catalans are voting today on whether or not they want independence from Spain. You're looking at live video from Barcelona where informal polls are now open. The vote is not being recognized by the Spanish government, but supporters hope a large turnout will get their attention. A pro-independence rally Saturday evening drew a large crowd in Barcelona. U.S.-led airstrikes destroyed a convoy carrying ISIS leaders in Iraq. It happened near the northern city of Mosul. Right now, it's unclear if top ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi was in any of the 10 armed trucks that were struck. Also in Baghdad, a series of car bombs killed at least 21 people. There goes one right there and injured dozens more Saturday. Video captured one of those blasts, as you can see, as a car exploded outside a fuel station in Al Amil, a neighborhood in southwestern Baghdad. No one has claimed responsibility for these attacks. Meantime, Iraq is welcoming the U.S. decision to send additional troops to the country, but says the U.S. is, quote, a little late. Our senior international correspondent, Arwa Damon, has more on what this increase in U.S. ground forces is supposed to accomplish. The addition of 1,500 U.S. troops into Iraq almost doubles America's presence there. They are not meant to be in a combat role, but rather continuing to advise and assist the Iraqi security forces and the Kurdish Peshmerga, also providing America with critical increased eyes on the ground when it comes to those coalition airstrikes. These troops are going to potentially be based perhaps in Al Ambar province, some of them at least, and also potentially to the north in Taji, two key areas where ISIS has significant control. Al Ambar province especially critical in that it is predominantly Sunni and in the past has historically been Al Qaeda's key stomping ground. And when we look at Iraq's history, it was the Sunni tribes that allowed for the tide to turn against Al Qaeda. And those Sunni tribes are going to be vital if ISIS is to, in fact, be defeated. That is one of the main reasons why the U.S. and others are putting a lot of pressure on the Iraqi government, led by Shia Prime Minister Haider al Abadi, to reach out to those Sunni tribes who, at this stage, remain fairly weary of the government in Baghdad. But when we're talking about ISIS's long-term defeat, there is the realization that this cannot be achieved by military means alone. There has to be a significant political effort alongside it. Arwa Damon, CNN, Gaziantep, Turkey. Tensions are rising in Jerusalem yet again amid reports that Israeli police shot and killed a Palestinian man who they say attacked them with a knife. CNN senior international correspondent Nick Robertson is there. Well, this incident doesn't appear linked to the recent rise in tension over access to Temple Mount, the Noble Sanctuary. Um, the police say that they are investigating this incident. They say that the young Palestinian man who was shot and killed attacked their vehicle with a knife. Uh, you can see on the video there, the policeman gets out 
points his weapon, fires uh, the man, drops to the ground. Police say that the that uh, the policeman there fired a warning shot before firing at uh, at this man. What you can then see. Uh, the police come back, pick him up, put him in their vehicle, take him to the local hospital. That's where they say that he died. Now, there have been protests during the day, an early protest, about 50 young Palestinians burning tires in the streets there. The police say they moved reinforcements into the area. Later Saturday, there was another protest in the town of Kufakana. They say that about uh, uh, 2,500 people came out in protest there. Now, why while this doesn't appear linked to the recent increase in tensions here uh, in Jerusalem, there's certainly the, the possibility that this can really raise the temperature right now, if you will. There is a lot of concern about uh, the access to Temple Mount, the Noble Sanctuary, and this shooting by Israeli police of a young Palestinian man caught very clearly on camera has the potential to play into and escalate those existing tensions. Nick Robertson, CNN, Jerusalem. Violent protests and fires erupted around the Mexican presidential palace Saturday. Demonstrators are furious over the government's handling of the search for those 43 missing college students. Mexico's attorney general said Friday they've all been murdered and that three suspected gang members have confessed to killing them. But families aren't buying that story, saying evidence of the killings is slim and the Mexican authorities are trying to stem the public outcry. You're watching CNN Live coverage. Still ahead, he led the Soviet Union when the Berlin Wall came down. Mikhail Gorbachev tells us what now worries him about Eastern Europe. Twenty-five years ago, the Berlin Wall came down, symbolically ending the Cold War. Join Fred Pleitgen, Hala Garani and Jim Clancy in Berlin to celebrate this pivotal moment in history that shaped our modern world. And see how far we've come since the fall of the wall. Today on CNN. My voice, my story, my life in South Africa, in Kenya, South Sudan. Hear Africa's voices, a way of understanding the world. A dog, you see, in Africa, in Africa, in Africa. CNN African Voices. Hi, I'm Francisca Neka Okeke, a professor of physics from Nigeria. Hear my story. African Voices, Monday on CNN, in association with GLOW. Every country has an identity, a history, customs, culture. A unique landscape that determines how its people live, work, and play. Now, get an insider's look with CNN's On the Road. From the ancient charm of the Lana Kingdom to a new age approach to therapy, join me as we explore Thailand. On the Road, Thailand, all next week on CNN. It was exactly 25 years ago today, the 9th of November, when the wall started tumbling down in Berlin. Right now, where the Cold War barrier once cast its shadow of political division, there are lights celebrating freedom and German unity. Thousands of lanterns along the 15-kilometer-long path of the old wall. Later today, those lanterns will be filled with helium and set afloat. Former Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev warns the world is on the brink of another Cold War. Gorbachev was instrumental in setting the stage for the fall of the wall and is in Berlin for the celebrations. He spoke with our Jim Clancy about his decision not to use force to put down uprisings in Eastern Europe.